the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center in Austin, Texas is home to beautiful native plants and flowers, but it is also a leading center for research and education dedicated to the conservation of native Texas plants, since the center was founded in 1982 by Lady Bird Johnson. I think Mrs. Johnson really wanted to get the word out about the importance of native plants. I like to say it's, it's not just about pretty plants, okay? Plants are beautiful and they attract people. People love the color, they like what they look like, they smell good. But I think Mrs. Johnson was a lot more serious than that, but that was sort of her, her hook to draw people in. The Wildflower Center is her legacy, and, and beyond that, I think she has built a place where people can come and get educated about plants and plant conservation, especially kids. This is a great place for kids, and they come here and they love it, and it just really gets them started, I think, on the path to thinking about you know, conservation and native plants and taking care of the planet. It'd be great if we could all sort of leave a legacy like that, but she certainly did a lot in her life. We educate a lot of kids. Uh, we have school kids coming in here every day of the week, and we run about a thousand kids a month through the gardens, and we have specific programs for them on conservation and habitats. Kids are getting the message very early on that, that, that the environment's important, and that you know sustainability is important, and that um, the outdoors is your friend, and that you know life's better outside. And I think we're you know sort of making kids realize that this is a, a wonderful thing to do. You know, is to be outside and play and be children. You know, not just be inside a house and watch TV. The Wildflower Center has many programs aimed at education and conservation of native plants including the seed banking program headed up by Karen Clary. Seed banking is, is an insurance policy. So it allows us to collect seeds of plants that are here and if they get wiped out or destroyed, we have that seed which actually contains the germplasm for that species. It's also used um, for research. Um, there are research labs all over the world that are doing um, experimental work on hardiness or resistance to disease and predators, and so we loan our seeds out to them to do that kind of research. My goal as Seed Bank Program Manager is to continue to collect seeds of all native Texas species. And for me, that's a tall order because there are about 5,000 species to collect. We're about 10% of the way, so I have 90% more of the Texas seeds to collect. Clary and her team go to great lengths to preserve these seeds for future use and research. This is the seed lab and we keep seeds uh, sort of resting in here and the way you do that is um, once you clean seeds you want to keep them dry and so you have to worry about the humidity and what we do is we put the seeds, this represents a seed packet here. Each of these is a packet of seeds and we store them with silica gel. And so that's one way we store them and keep them dry. And the goal is to keep them dry so that they don't absorb water. We also have the seed cabinet. And so this is another way we store our seeds. We store them in the bags here and um, this cabinet is, is made out of cedar wood so it keeps insects out, it's naturally repellent, and so we're drying some of the seeds that we collected more recently in these bags, and they just hang here. This is, this is our dehumidifier. It's not a refrigerator, it's just a, a cabinet that keeps the humidity at a certain temperature, and so right now we're keeping it at about 12 degrees centigrade and 17% constant humidity, so when you keep seeds at 17 percent constant humidity, it really just keeps them in a, a suspended state of animation. And then this is our seed freezer, and this is where we keep our seeds for, um, for long-term storage. And this is actually, this little freezer contains our seed bank. And inside this seed bank are the 600 species of plants that I told you we, we collected. So this is the mother load right here. So let me open it for you, okay? Okay. 
So it's, it's a pretty simple deal. I mean, we, we've collected them, we've dried them, um, we've cleaned them, and now we've packaged them, and we put them in these um, kind of cryovac containers each one labeled with a species, and then when someone requests some of these seeds, we just snip the top open, count some seeds out, seal it back, and send them off. So it's a pretty simple operation, really. The Wildflower Center's seed bank program is more necessary than ever considering the variety of threats native Texas plants face today, like the ongoing drought. We have really had to conserve water and be very careful about that. We've looked for other ways to, to store water and uh, capture water, and we have cisterns here that we use, but we've also been looking at ways to just further conserve the water that we use, because we use a lot of water for water plants. Because of the drought, uh, a lot of the critters that normally don't eat our plants are, are coming in and eating them, so we, we have a lot of predation. We have hungry deer, we have hungry rabbits, we have hungry rats, and they all come in and you know try to eat our plants. Native Texas plants must also cope with other invasive plant species. Bastard cabbage is notorious because it is threatening Texas state flower, the blue bonnet. This plant is such a problem because it directly competes with blue bonnets. It germinates at the same time in the winter as the blue bonnets, but it's a much more aggressive grower. So blue bonnets have to fight with this bastard cabbage for you know their little spot of, of soil, and they often lose. Human development also has unintended consequence for Texas native plants. Development, just by its nature, is a ground disturbing activity and it destroys native plants. The Wildflower Center recently took in a large population of endangered towbush fishhook cacti to cultivate until they can be reintroduced into their native region that is currently under development in Kimball County. It takes a lot of man hours to do the work required to preserve our native habitats, so the Wildflower Center is always in need of new volunteers. We have tons of volunteer opportunities at the Wildflower Center. Every year we have about 600 volunteers who come and work here, and many come every week. And they do the lion's share of the work here. When you see the gardens, they look so beautifully tended, and everything looks in, in, in place, and you know all the colors are good, and the plants are here. And well, all that's done by volunteers. They do all the weeding, they do all the planting, they help us straighten up, they do a lot of the maintenance work. Um, they keep the plants watered, you know, they're invaluable. We, we couldn't stay open without them, and there are lots and lots of volunteer opportunities. One of our main goals is to educate people about using native plants, and primarily landowners and homeowners, so that when they go out to buy plants, they make a choice to buy native instead of non-native plants because when you plant native plants, you really do a lot of good conservation work. First of all, you save a lot of water because most of them are drought, drought tolerant. They live longer, so you're not replacing your plants over and over and over again and spending more money. But they also um, are the plants that our native uh, insects, our pollinators, um, evolved with. So it's really important to keep those plants around. The Ladybird Johnson Wildflower Center will continue its work until all native Texas species are preserved in the seed bank, so future generations will be able to stop and smell the flowers.